Well, how do their chums design? Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, it's a cup of tea with Captain Steve. Yes, I'm bringing it back, the cup of tea with Captain Steve. And today, chums, I want to talk about a very curious document that's been doing its rounds on the old internet from Harvard University, nonetheless. Talking of aliens and craziness. I say craziness, it's from scientists, so how crazy can it be? Trust the science. Okay, <laughs> let's jump on over to the Tinter web, shall we, people? That goes. Okay, so if you do a quick Google search for Harvard University and uh, aliens, I've just put Harvard aliens in this case, you can see here that there's all sorts from astronomer A.V. Loeb. If I hopefully I pronounced that correctly, I probably haven't. But jumping over onto the actual news articles, aliens might be living among us disguised as humans, claims Harvard study. Okay, this sounds a bit David Icke territory to me, chums. I don't know what you think, but this is this is highly intriguing. I've got my own theories on aliens and maybe even the origins of man, which we're going to cover off drawing a cup of tea. Right, so this isn't hard to find. This isn't conspiracy theory. This is from Harvard University. Just keep that in mind. Okay, right, well, let's um, scroll on down. Because, yes, there's a load of fluff of flannel here about who this person is and how they came to this theory, blah de blah de blah But this is more of a thought experiment than an actual documented paper. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it says it right here. It says, the researchers admitted that their research was likely to be regarded as sceptical by most scientists, but urged the scientific community to consider their claim in spirit of epicytic, whatever, humanity, humility and openness. The paper is yet to be peer reviewed. It hasn't been peer reviewed. Now that's a big thing. Okay, so for any paper to be accepted into mainstream science and to get published on some sort of bona fide website, it really needs to be peer reviewed. This is just thought experiments and the main thoughts, the main things, this is it in summary and condensed down. Number one, humid, human crypto terrestrials a technologically advanced ancient human civilization that was largely destroyed long ago but continued to exist in a remnant form so maybe they're talking about atlantis or the sumerians or or something in similar sort of stature we'll touch on the sumerians in a bit because i'm going to go into my most likely candidate which would probably be sumerians and i'll tell you why once i get to it Humanid or theropod crypto terrestrials, a technologically advanced non human civilization consisting of some terrestrial animals which evolved to live in stealth, e.g., underground. These could be an ape like hominid descendant of descendants unknown intelligent dinosaurs. Okay, so this is where it trips over into where I feel David Icke has pressed on that there could be evolved reptilian humanoids walking amongst us. Now, a lot of reptilians try to mimic other reptile or other creatures to get their prey. Think of the chameleon. In fact, there's a lot of creatures out there like octopi or many different subaquatic creatures that take on forms to mimic other creatures. So that I don't. Is it far fetched? You know, Apparently, primates evolved into human beings. Could it be that dinosaurs also evolved in a sort of like chain and a splinter arc and became disguised as humans? Huh. Could be a reptilian right now and I might not even know it. <laughs> I don't know. But um, you know, if you look at different cultures around the world, say like say Japan, you know, they believe that their ancients, their kings of yesteryear, their emperors, were descendants of dragons and had the ability to change into a dragon at will. We've also got the tales of the Naga, which kind of comes across in Beowulf, you know, with the whole woman in the cave type thing. Half human, half reptilian. And that, 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 that echoes throughout all different cultures. Including the like, Hindu cultures have got some pretty strange gods and all sorts going on there that could be regarded as reptilian-esque. So I don't know. It's a little bit odd. When you look into the whole reptilian humanoid theory, it's not just limited to 
David Icke. There is actually some cultural and historical references behind it. I'm not telling you that I believe in reptilian humanoid, don't know. However, there is an extremely odd sort of condition that's just been sort of realised out there in the world, which is called Demon Face Syndrome. I haven't got a tab open on that, I've just thought of it just now. Uh, so I will do it in a moment, I'll come back to that in a bit, because that's a little bit strange. Former extraterrestrial, or whatever that word is, crypto-terrestrials, these beings could have arrived on Earth from elsewhere in the cosmos, or from the human future, and concealed themselves in stealth, such as in the moon. Okay, well, China has just landed something on the dark side of the moon. And um, we've got pictures from the dark side of the moon. People thought that it might have just been a big hollow structure with a giant base in the back, like a half-built Death Star. Which I think China can now put that safely to rest, as a theory. However, there is documented historical documents that document, the and the chronicles, the arrival of the moon. Which is a little bit strange. And some people say that when the moon arrived, that's probably when the Earth last swapped poles and the giant flood took place and all this sort of good, well, I wouldn't say good stuff, freaking biblical end apocalyptic times happened. That's far from good, isn't it? So there's some weirdness about the moon. The moon is a very strange object. I mean, some of the craters are miles wide and some of them are, are really small. A couple of football pitches. But the depth of all the craters are about the same depth. Now apparently when you strike the moon or anything hits the moon, it vibrates and makes a harmonic tone, almost like it's hollow and made of some kind of metal, rather than solid and rock. But other people say that's because there's a lot of dust and debris on the actual surface, and that's what we see moving around, and that's why craters are the same depth, but the actual moon itself is so solid that that's why all the craters are the same depth. Don't know about that, you know, that doesn't happen when asteroids hit Earth. We get massive great big craters of all varying depths. So I don't know, I don't know, there's something strange about the moon. I haven't done enough research on it to go into it in more depth than having a cup of tea with you to say it's an interesting object. I don't know enough about it. So there's that. I don't think they're actually hiding in the moon. If they are hiding anywhere, I would say in our oceans. The amount of UFO sightings that we've seen of craft emerging from our oceans is freaking phenomenal. And also, maybe even Antarctica could explain why pretty much every single continent out there has been placing flags all over Antarctica. I'm wondering what's trapped and frozen underneath that ice. I have heard that there is a flash frozen forest there, so it could have been a complete utopia at one stage. And then that ties into the whole pole reversing type idea that I just mentioned earlier, because if that happened, then yes, flash freezing the forests probably could happen. There's a lot of stuff that we just don't know about our own planet. Um, I mean, we can have good guesses. There's theor theor theoretic papers out there, probably haven't been peer reviewed, just like this one, that could suggest all sorts. You know, I like to have thought provoking sort of discussions and debates while having a cup of tea early in the mornings. Right, magical crypto terrestrials. Okay. Entities that are less like homegrown aliens and more like earthbound angels. These beings relate to the human world in ways that are less technological and more magical, such as fairies, elves, and nymphs. Okay. Well, you know, throughout time, throughout culture, throughout folklore, there has been reports of different sorts of entities and beings. I would say more like vampires would probably be a better sort of sort of shout, wouldn't it? You know, but you know, each to their own. All these different folklore -y type things. It's like the werewolf, humans that can transform and metamorphosize into beasts. Well, that takes us back to David Icke's theory, and it also takes us back to humans in disguise. Well, aliens in disguise as humans. Anyways, if I was to give any sort of credit or credence to any of these ideas, the whole idea of ancient aliens and the Sumerian tablets spring to mind. So the Sumerian culture were like 4,000 years before Christ, and they actually recorded the first ever religion into clay tablets. And now a lot of this stuff that they've actually placed into here is pretty far out there. There's been different interpretations. This guy here is called Alexander Stitchin. 
He was one of the first people to translate these and inscribe them into wordage that we understand. However, it has been found that a lot of what he interpreted may not be bang on perfect. There's a lot of sort of doubt and scepticism out there, but then there's other people that say, no, what he has actually said is true. So there's a lot of weirdness. You see like, over here. So on this image, I don't know whether I can, how big can I make that? Not very. But yeah, up in this area here, it actually shows our solar system. Now this is 4,000 years before Christ. Okay. No telescopes, no nothing like that. So this is just by observation. Now they actually done the whole solar system, every single planet, in relative size order as well. Not only that, there was pigments of coloration found on this clay tablet that actually shows that they knew what color these planets were. Which is pretty insane when you think about it. How would a culture that early know the colors and size of each of the planets inside of our solar system? Unless they were shown or told or had means to see. Bizarre, very, very bizarre. Now, not only that, Inside of the clay tablets were also sort of like carvings that show the double helix. The double helix that we still use today that we know we call the Cadiseus. But these, these sort of like entwined serpents are said to represent DNA. Now inside of these clay tablets, the Sumerians claim that the gods came from the stars on ch winged chariots. They didn't have words like UAP or an unidentified flying object. Pretty much anything that crossed their freaking skies would have been identified, I would imagine, back then. But anyways, they actually put into stone that humans were created on this planet by those that came from the sky. And they don't talk of one singular god, they talk of plural. It was a race that came from the sky, took what was on Earth, messed around with the DNA, with their own and created humans. So these entities looked a little bit like us from the depictions that we see here. And you can see here, there's one on a throne right here. Um, let me just move Winamp out of the way. But yeah, there's one on the throne here. And you can see how big he is in comparison to these little chappies. So these little chappies here are the creations. These are the humans and this is the God. Now he's, he's freaking huge, freaking huge. Now the, this, this, this sort of like race was very good at depicting things in sort of size and relativity. Now, they took time to carve these things. That isn't a mistake. You know, that's carved into freaking stone. And yes, you, some people will say, well, maybe they made them bigger to show that they are more important. I'm not so sure, you know? It, it, because you see it in different sort of um, carvings that they've done. The same sort of error, if you like. I don't think it's... I don't think it's an error at all. I mean, look, look at this carving. So you've got two little humanoids there, but then you've got this giant there that stands well above the height of this sort of like bull. It just happens too, too often in their carvings for me to say, no, it's just a mistake. You know, they've, they've carved that into stone wrong. Before you set out to carve something into stone, you're going to make sure you're going to get it right. It's going to be there for a long time. You know, it's like a tattooist. Oh, well, yeah, I'm just going to do this guy bigger than the rest for no reason. No, really? OK, anyway, so that's my thoughts on Sumerian clay tablets. And the fact that they said that, you know, these people came from the stars and they created us on this planet for whatever means. I mean, according to Alexander Stitchin, it was to mine gold to help repair their craft so they could get back to their own planet, which was a wandering planet called Nibiru, which is actually on an elliptical orbit of our own solar system. I think a lot of this might be slightly put out there. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to comment on Alexander Stitchin's work because I know that he's got people that love him and hate him. He's a very Marmite character in the UFO societies and all that sort of shenanigans. But at the same time, I think it's very thought provoking. Least entertain it. Pretty much like that Harvard document that I read at the start. It's all speculative. It's all theory. It's not peer reviewed. Alexander Stitchin's wrote a load of books. He's published, you know, so read into it and make of it what you want make your own mind up you know i'm not dictating on what you should and shouldn't believe you know no heck no i'm not no i'd never do that so i kind of feel that there could be remnants of these anunnaki these gods from the sumerian times still on earth and yes they may have found ways to disguise themselves 
Now, there's also talks in biblical books of the Nephilim, giants amongst mankind, that actually laid with their actual creation as a humanoid woman and had offspring that were slightly larger than normal men. And some of these are in myths and legends like Hercules and stuff like that, like demigods, you know, where all Greek mythology comes from. And I love Greek mythology. I kind of feel that you know, a lot of this stuff, is it myth? Uh, some of it was by the Greeks was claimed no it's it's not myth a lot of it is true it was actual you know was it Homer that actually wrote it all down yeah, all that sort of stuff so who knows it's not like we've got a time machine to go back there and freaking verify this stuff we've only got accounts from those times and those times that you know who knows who knows people is what I'm saying anyway I'll have a little sip of tea So I still think that there could be remnants of this Anunnaki race somewhere within inside our planet. They could be under the oceans, like I mentioned. It could be under Antarctica. It could be that they've made pacts with the governments and live in underground bases. Yeah, like Iron Mountain. If you haven't seen the tour of Iron Mountain, if I can find some footage of it, I put it over the top of the Winamp below me and have that sort of like looping for a little while so you can see that because it's, it's, it's freaking weird, to be honest. I mean, that's a massive underground complex, and that's just one of many that, that are all over the place. We've got underground seed vaults as well. Oh, anyway, that's going off on another tangent right now. But trust me, there's a lot of underground places. There's a lot of places where we could actually have these intelligent alien life forms working with government, and that could explain how technology has gone leaps and bounds. I mean, it was only what? 15 to 20 years ago that I had a Nokia 3210 and now we've got these touch screen fold out crazy phones that you, you can have all sorts on the desktop like your own koi pond you know it, it, it's, it's, it's insane it, the, how far technology has gone in such a quick extent and then almost pause when we've hit the threshold of AI or the advent of AI I should say and now we're moving into quantum computing and also now looking at how we can store information in DNA we are at, we're at the cusp of something big I think people I think we're almost at the point where if there is an intelligent life and in, an alien creator of mankind we're almost on parallel to some of the technologies that they probably had when they first created us interesting you know, especially when you look at references that God creates man and then man becomes their own God. And could we be on the precipice of that? And are we allowed to get past that? You know, is there going to be some sort of magical reset that happens? But anyways, moving on from all that, if there are these intelligent species that came down to Earth and made humankind, I'm thinking a lot of the sort of grey aliens that we probably see, you know, these little grey men with the big eyes that look quite cute, they don't come across as very menacing. They're not gonna you're not gonna be too scared of them if you saw them. They're quite frail little frames. You know, imagine one of those against Mike Tyson in a boxing ring. Who's going to win? They're not that imposing. They're not that scary. But I kind of feel if there are these Anunnaki, these giant alien humanoids, that would be quite imposing and would be quite scary, especially if they can morph into reptilian forms or something. That would be brown trouser moments for most humans, wouldn't it? We're no longer top of the food chain. We're no longer, you know, the number one dominant species on this planet. And what do we do when we feel threatened? You know, we're quite an aggressive, vicious race, and there's a lot of us. There might not be so many of them. They might not have the ability to procreate like we do. You know, for a giant, it might take them four, it might take them hundreds of years to take a, a, a young un to term with massive complications. We don't know. So, could it be that, you know, they've created us on this planet and we're slightly out of control? I don't know. Really don't know. Strange theories, a lot of tangents going on. Oh, chums, I forgot people. to mention the demon face thing. So I'm, I'm recording it now and I'm going to insert this somewhere in the video where I was talking. So this is demon face syndrome. Now, this is how the actual you know, the world portrays demon face syndrome. That's what a normal person will see. But somebody with demon face syndrome sees what you see on this right hand tile here. It's almost elongated eyes, elongated grin that goes almost ear to ear and pointed ears. 
This is how it's now being coined. Demon face syndrome is now being characterised by these images. However, that's not entirely true. When you actually encounter somebody with demon face syndrome, what they see is more like a Picasso picture, where the, the face just hasn't got any symmetry. One eye would be lower than the other, and they just don't see the same level of symmetry we do. It's not this demon-y type, you know, the, these wrinkles in the side or, or pointed ears almost like elves. You know, that, that paper mentions elves and fairies and things like that. Who's to say this isn't an actual So these thing. little grey aliens that you know people see quite often in most alien encounters, I'm wondering whether the Anunnaki, these scarier aliens, created them. Almost like little mini consciousness projects that projectors. Maybe they can control them via thought and they can send those up to the surface, use them as little scouting parties. They're a lot smaller, they can make smaller ships, a lot less conspicuous. And if they are found, we're not going to shite ourselves. And they're just like little mini drones that they send out to little to look. I don't think they're coming from the sky, the stars anymore. I think they're actually based here on our planet, maybe in underground bases or underwater bases, or maybe even offset slightly from our own dimension within time. Perhaps they're just in a time slip. There's a lot of different odd theories, and it comes back to the origins of mankind. And I'm wondering whether aliens came to this planet and found the different primates on this planet. I mean, you've got the orangutans that's got the orange fur. I mean, we've got people with orange fur or orange hair, whatever you want to say. But when you look at each of these different primates, you can kind of see subtle different resemblances of different races on this planet. It's like the chimpanzee has got very much whitey pink skin, like myself. You know, look, I, I kind of look like that chimpanzee, right? <laughs> Yeah. And then you can see similarities to other races. I mean, I had a school teacher that looked just like this. I did. Yeah. Hello there, Mr. Fiddis. <laughs> I hope he's not watching right now. But you know what? Could it be that ancient aliens took the primates that were on this planet, mixed different sorts of DNA of their own, and created us? I mean, if they are masters of DNA, and we've seen the double helix from earlier on, earlier on, and they liked messing about with DNA, who's to say that's not a thing? I mean, when you look at ancient Egypt carvings and structures and things like that, they had these sort of like donkey-like looking creatures that had wings. I don't know what the actual real term for them are, but then they had a human upper body, almost like a centaur with wings. Now, not only in the, the Quran, where they mention that, you know, Muhammad flew up to the heavens on a talking flying donkey, well, that's kind of what that freaking thing is. I mean, let, let's just jump onto here. Let's try it. Okay, chums. Well, the word I was looking for is Sphinx. <laughs> okay. I don't know why that just slipped my mind. But anyway, here you go. Here's a carving of a Sphinx. Now, this has got like quite a, a jolly, grotesque head on it, to be fair, hasn't it? You know? Whereas a lot of the sphinxes, when you think of the sphinx, it's more this sort of head sort of thing going on there. And, you know, the sphinx is freaking massive when it comes to carvings. But you don't think of the sphinx as having wings until you see the other carvings like this, where it has clearly got wings. And if I was to describe that, I would say, yes, well, it's more of a flying lion than a flying donkey. But there we go. And you know, it's got a human head. Now, even in the Bible, there's references of Samson riding a talking donkey into battle. There, yeah, make of that what you will. So there's talking animals in quite a lot of these religious documents. Could it be that these aliens, these Anunnaki, didn't just mess around with primate DNA, but also messed around with quite a lot of animal DNA and made some pretty crazy hybrids? Could make sense as to why we've got quite a lot of weird mythology and the fact that these carvings were done in stone and they like to depict what they actually saw rather than what they imagined it kind of makes me feel that these things did exist especially since they went to the freaking trouble of making a freaking giant one like a pyramid i mean how long would that have taken to build that oh yeah we're just going to make a giant lion with a human head for no freaking reason why <laughs> I mean, it, it does make you wonder, doesn't it? But, so, 
maybe they did come to Earth, maybe they did mess about with all the DNA of the creatures that we find on the planet. And then that takes us to the story of Noah's Ark. Now Noah took two of every animal on a giant boat before the massive floods happened. Well what if he didn't actually take on two of every animal, he took on male and female DNA of every animal, then after the floods then he restored them back to the planet using some sort of alien technology. I mean we've got seed banks of our own where we're hoping to do exactly the same thing. And when you look at Iron Mountain, the stuff that we've put in Iron Mountain is all of our historical documents, first ever signed copies of things, stuff that we don't want to be lost to time if there is another apocalypse or another great flood perhaps. And some people say that the moon, like I mentioned, appeared around that time. So maybe there might be the Anunnaki living in the moon. Maybe it is a giant freaking spaceship. Maybe that's how they got here last time. All this sort of stuff all sort of, all sort of interconnects. And this is all down to this one document that's circulating on the Tinterwebs that's got me thinking about this this morning while I'm having my cup of tea with you guys inside of the Viewerverse. Yes, this is a bit of a weird one. It's not about movies, it's not about games. It's about internet weirdness that's got me thinking. I hope it's got you thinking as well and having a nice little brew while you do so. I've talked about this. and that, That's an NBC right there. You know, The Guardian, NDTV, Newsweek, Fox. So you know, if I get a funny little thing underneath my video that says reptilian hominoids from you know YouTube, sticking it on there from Wikipedia, you probably know that I'm probably talking about something I shouldn't be. I'm probably going to have some of my videos now suppressed for a little while by YouTube, which is really annoying because I don't feel that this has done any damage. It's highlighted a document that's out there, theories that are out there, and I've just added my own thoughts on it that I've had while drinking a cup of tea, probably having a slice of toast. You know, it should be healthy debate. There should be things that we should be able to freely talk about. We'll see how this video goes, people, and whether I do more of them, because I love this stuff. It entertains me. If it entertains me, I'm hoping it entertains you. And that's what the Cup of Teas with Captain Steve are all about. I bring you things that have made me think, go, oh, that's awesome. Could be a video game. Could be a movie. Could be something crazy like this. Yeah. Anyway, people, until next time, I've finished my cup of tea. It is now empty. Well, there's dregs in there. Dregs. Yeah, if you want a mug like this, you can check out my merch store. It's from my About tab. You can get a similar sort of mug. And you can also get my own brew of tea from Cherizina.com. Yeah, so yeah, it's just a lovely oaky breakfast tea. Anyway, until next time, goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye again. Yeah, you could, you could drink along with me. You could have the same mug, the same brand of tea. Yeah, I'll see you for the next episode. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. I like my tea. An English breakfast tea. But it's not just any brew, it's the captain's all seven brew. What brew? Captain Steve's all seven brew. Ooh, seven, seven. It's a breakfast tea with no keynotes. All seven, your boat. This tea is the best, better than the rest. Go buy some, heck, buy loads. It's the best tea ever. Made by people that are clever. Check out their site, Cherizena Co. UK. I'll say that again. Shows it up, call you can